Getting away from the Notre Dame campus, getting away from last year and uh, the talk of the championship game and all the things that, that we really can't think about. We have to think about right now. Shiloh was an opportunity for us to focus on the present. We really wanted something that it was just us and there was no other distractions and it was clearly just the Notre Dame football players there. Chipmunks, no, no, no. Man, this is the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I didn't know where we were. Where are we? Initially hearing it, I, you know, I was kind of confused at why we would go off campus. Now that we're down here, you know, you, you get a better picture to why we actually came down here and, and to bond and, you know, that's really what we're doing. <laughs> It's kind of like a nice little sanctuary for us to uh, you know, kind of just get away from everything at Notre Dame and, and just focus on what's important right now. Welcome back. You excited? A lot of logistics, you know, to move the group down here. We were very well prepared. All of our support staff really did a great job. Okay. Good? Okay. So, you know, once the logistics are taken care of, now it's, it's practice. First couple of days of practice, you know, everyone's pretty anxious to get out there and everyone, um, you know, kind of has a lot to prove. Who's next? Some gloves, please. I've been waiting for so long to, to start this journey and to actually be there. It was just just being focused and just getting ready to grind. Um, I felt just ready. Thank you, sir. Basically with Jalen, he's like my little brother. So, you know, I tell him if he has any questions, you know, I can explain to you what's going on. That's what I got right there. I played that position like for a year. Prince, he's been a great role model to me. Someone to look up to and someone to just guide me in the right direction. and. They roomed me up with him for, for camp, so it, it's, it's been a great pleasure. We kind of took that upon ourselves to, you know, always when the younger group came in to treat them with respect, you know, treat them as, you know, we would want to be treated. You know, we create that when they step on campus. Really, we just hang out with them. You know, when you get down to know them, know each and, each and every one of them, you know, they're great guys. You ready? Throughout the whole time there, I kept saying to myself, I, I chose the right school. I think we're the same people that we were in recruiting him, uh, and he saw the same people interacting with him on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that that's what most kids want to know. Were these guys just used car salesmen in the recruiting process? Are who they are um, what we thought they were? And I think that that's probably what he's referring to. <laughs> The competitiveness is this camp has been by far the best since I've been here. That was the first thing that caught my eye. The first day, our very first practice, that was like we were in full pads, everyone was moving. We weren't full out hitting, but it was like there were some collisions, people were moving to the football, people were just getting the ball, the receivers were making cuts, and I just think that seeing that the first day is kind of the start of, of something, something good to come, and people are that competitive and, and that ready to go on day one. We just started. It's a long journey. And we need to get a lot of work done. A good first practice, laid the groundwork for, you know, a lot of good things to come over the next few days. Count on me at two! One, two! Count on me! I'm excited that, you know, we get a chance to spend the time with our kids tonight. They're not going anywhere, so we're going to be here tonight. We'll have meetings, we'll have a team meeting, we'll do a little bit more team building tomorrow. And for a coach uh, that doesn't get a lot of opportunity to be with his team, it's exciting for me and our staff to get a chance to spend some time with our players. <laughs> That wall is just a fun way to connect with your teammates, to see who's gonna push themselves, get to the top of it. You find out some guys fear of height and just 
It's a good way to bond as a team and uh, you know, have a good time. We're giving our guys an opportunity to learn more about each other outside of football. There's different ways to learn about each other. One is through things that they're not normally skilled at. I do want to tell you there is an element of risk to this. They know they're skilled at football, so you see some of our top athletes fail at some of this stuff. It does them well to come out here and show that the, they're not good at everything. Oh, no! No! Oh. Oh. Come on, Kona! I think Kona started the whole week off by getting up to the, the climbing wall. You know, he's a bigger guy, and, and some of the bigger guys tried to go up it and didn't make it so far. And when he was able to get up there and, and show everyone that he could do it, and to have guys like that show the team maybe something that they didn't know about him, that's great. Catch your breath! As you're climbing up, you, you realize how, how far off the ground you're getting, and, you know, it gives you kind of, you know, chills. And when you look down, it just, I don't know, for me, I'm, I'm scared of heights, so. Kona going up there and, doing something you know that nobody really expected him to you know it just shows our our level of competition and how we push one another it is it's, it's fun it's, it's it's a workout but when you get to the top, you, you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Now jump. Yeah, yeah Kona. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Once you see someone do it, it gives you a motivation to, to get up there and do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Way to wrap that D-line, Kona. I'll say leadership here is just you know, guys leading by example continuously in every aspect of life, um, you know, within the classroom, even on the rock wall uh, and on the field. And then when you lead by example, you know, you bring the freshmen and the sophomores and the juniors up with you. At first, I wasn't going to do anything. Okay, what changed my mind was the reason why we went to Camp Shiloh. You with me, Lord. Being there for team bonding, and I, and I figured you only live once, and, and to be there with my teammates, I figured I should give it a shot. My heart was racing. <laughs> you just felt everything just kind of coming to a, a stop. I saw the look in his eyes. <laughs> he looked scared. He told me before that he don't really like heights, but he wanted to try it. Uh, I heard Coach Jones say, you don't have to jump, you have to jump. But once, you know, you're up there, I'm not just going to not jump. Like it's, so I just uh, I took the leap, took the leap of faith. You know, to see the crowd, the audience, you know, uh, how fun it was and, you know, the laughter of everybody. <laughs> I just figured I'd give it a shot. I'm not scared of heights anymore. <laughs> no longer afraid of heights. Jalen Smith. <sighs> the leap of faith. Go, oh, man. All right. At first, I wasn't going to do it. And then I seen all this activity going around me. Everyone, you know, participating in all these rock climbing, oh my God. swings, and I seen a leap of faith. When I saw Prince get ready to go up, I thought it was it was very it was very funny actually. Like I did, he figured, yeah, I'll just I'll do it. I just grabbed the helmet and one of the straps, and start climbing. And as I was climbing, and I didn't want to look down. I just felt my heart beat. He hesitated a few times. Two, one. <laughs> For me to like show that kind of fear around my teammates, and that just shows how comfortable I am around everyone. You know, they're all my brothers. You know, coach was down there too. To be great, you have to get in an area where you're uncomfortable. They got into an area where they were very uncomfortable. I felt like I was hallucinating. It, it looked so far, like it was like 100 feet. Come on, Prince. He's always stepped outside his comfort zone. He's always done what's best for his development. And Prince knew uh, that he wanted to conquer another fear, and, and that was heights. And so it doesn't surprise me 
That's why he'll be so successful. Prince facing his fears, something like that, it, it definitely tells that, that he'll, do, he'll do whatever it takes to get the job done. And I think that'll carry onto the field. But when it was just us, you know, you can see every side of every single person, you know, all their personalities and just who they really are. Everybody's got their guard down here. Nobody's, uh, you know, pretending here. It's, um, you're away, you're at camp, um, everybody's relaxed. There's no pretending here, there's no fakers. And so it gets you an opportunity to get real close to your guys. You're not going to drop me, are you? It just helps them to see, you know, some of the leaders uh, get all the way up there. What's the strategy here? I mean, I just I can't fail here. I got too much pressure on me. Let's go, Tommy. All right, Tommy. All right, Tom. All right, Tom. You know, just to have me go up there and, you know, kind of the leader of the offense and the guy they look to to go up there, you know, maybe it makes them want to go up a little extra. Come on, Tom. Yeah. They're looking to me as a guy that, you know, when you know, faced a little adversity, will find a way to get up there. Why do you take all of the time and effort to go up that wall when it's free time for you? Why, why do you expend all that energy? Oh. It's because you've got your peers in front of you and it's about you. That opportunity right there was what we were trying to get to. Woo! Tonight's the last night of Shiloh, so as a dietitian, I've got to make something that's fun for them. So we're out here at the bonfire and we're making s'mores. So it's been an incredible start to the season. So I'm really excited and uh, my guys are focused. So we got to have a little fun tonight. The last night of, of Camp Shiloh at the fire, I mean, it was really just a great opportunity kind of for all of us to just kick back and relax. Campfire was fun. It was something different because, you know, usually you don't go to a campfire, you're only with like, you know, probably six, seven friends. And it's cool because, you know, we had a whole team of guys who with different backgrounds and with one main purpose. And, you know, just to get to know each other around that time was, it was real cool. That was cool. One of the biggest reasons why we went to Shiloh was try to get to know some of the guys that you may not know so well on the team and try to come closer. And the bonfire was kind of a good conclusion to the whole uh, few days at Shiloh. See them bad boys? It was about uh, our players um, getting to know themselves, their strengths and weaknesses, getting to know their teammates like they haven't known them before. Uh, and then getting an opportunity to come together as a football team. It was a, a primer, if you will. It wasn't the start and the finish of this camp that we're in, but a great primer to focus our guys on developing for this year. The Fighting Irish are back home. Notre Dame practice on campus for the first time Friday morning. It was also their first workout of the season in full pass. Yeah. Some of the best competitive practices that I've coached in a long time. Camp is extremely competitive. You know, when you're, you have a team that's so talented, camp gets extremely competitive and guys push one another to the next level. It's fast football. It's as fast as I've seen here at Notre Dame. There's depth. There's young players that are going to play for us. There's veterans that are going to play for us that have seen a lot of football. It's a good mix. Offense, second defense. They said one on offense, two on defense. So let me tell you the guys I had in class, all right? Well, seven. That's TJ right there. This is always kind of fun every year. They you know, let the faculty come out and watch one practice at the beginning of the, of the season. So it's kind of fun to see the guys that I see in class out here on the field. What's up with Logan guarding you, man? He's like a better defender than he is an actor on your phone. 
Professor Mandel, he's a great guy. Uh, really enjoyed taking his intro to production class. He makes you learn through experience. It was a little weird to see him on the field because when you're in the classroom, you have that student-teacher relationship. You don't think of them as seeing you as a football player and you wouldn't think of them as really being a fan. It's funny watching him out here. I can't even, I don't see the football player profile that most, you know, most fans see. I just see the, the guys in class. I look at them as, as students, as human beings, because that's what they are. They're like 17, 18, 19, 20 year old kids. They're not professional players. That's something that as a faculty member, you get to see that the most fans don't get to see. They're real people. How you been? I've been good, how about you? Looking forward to it? Yeah. So I'm a professor from my accounting two class. Our bonds with our professors are very important to us individually because they start to learn about us, how we learn, how we develop, how we just interact with each and every person in the class. Meeting a teacher face to face, the bond just grows more and more. When I came to Notre Dame, I, I didn't really understand why we had the highest graduation rates. Hey, hey, Keith. Hey, hey, guys. I, I thought it was, well, we must just have, you know, the smartest kids. But the real secret was the faculty. They reached out in a way that I was never used to at any other school. Thank you. So I wanted to give back a little bit. And, and to have a faculty appreciation day was, was my way of saying thank you for that communication. So we are early in the process, gentlemen, early. So take a deep breath. We're gonna be here for a while. We got a lot of work to do. And we got the media today. They're gonna to grab the cameras. They're gonna put a microphone in front of you. And Stefan, they're gonna put a mic in front of you today, Stefan, and they're <laughs> gonna say, how many sacks? Where are you, Stefan? Where are you, Stefan? Stand up. They're gonna say, Stefan, are you gonna break the sack record? What are you gonna say? You know, I'm just worried about today. To get better in practice. I'm just worried about <laughs> today. Do it! Yeah. 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 Every reporter is, is going to want to know about last year and, and how that's going to help this year. And uh, they, they're going to want to know, what do you think of the schedule and how difficult it is? And none of that matters. All that matters is the next practice. And so I was really just trying to remind them why we went to Shiloh, what they learned at Shiloh, and what they need to continue to learn is that for the next five months, it's going to be about the next day. Good job. Get a break. Count on me on two, one, two. Count on me. Sad news tonight. Aaron Alford, shown here with his older brother Tony before the Notre Dame Utah game in 2010, died today suffering a heart attack. This is footage of the Alford family. Aaron Alford was the executive director of a facility in Utah that helped disadvantaged youth. My brother Aaron was clearly far and away my best friend. When the day that went by, I didn't tell him how proud I was of him. My mother and my father, they raised a really good young man and my brother. They did an unbelievable job with him. Coach Alfred, he suffered a great loss losing his brother. And Coach Alfred, is, he's acted as a father figure to many of the players, uh, myself included. He's a great individual. He's a great father. He's a great husband. and. Um, you know, when things like that happen, you just got to show your support and let you know that you let him know that you're there for him. He's close to a lot of us. He recruited a lot of us who are here now. He's known me since about my junior year in high school. He was there and supported me when my father passed a couple years ago. Being able to give him the support he gave me in his you know time of need is definitely something I would like to do. It hurts. I mean, so it's, it's important to us to reach out to him and you know make sure that you know he he feels our love and, and our support. You know, there's two families. There, there's your own family that, that obviously we all feel is the most important thing in our, in our lives. And then there's your football family. He needed to be with the most important part of his life. We got by, you know, for a few days without him. Uh, they could not have gotten by um, without him being with his family in a very difficult time. After practice, George and I just took it upon ourselves to get some good extra work in, to practice what Coach Alfred has been preaching. Even though he might be 2,000 miles away, the standards that he has set are, are set in stone and you know we carry with, with us as a, a running back core each and every day. Well, it's pretty clear that they don't want to let him down. You know, that's an important part of what we're building here with, with you know, you talk about building strong bonds.
it's not letting others down that makes that a strong bond. You don't want to let your teammates or your coaches down. That's uh, pretty heady stuff. Good morning, Coach McIndoe. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yep. It's real nice to have Coach Alpha back, not only as a coach, but for me personally, he's more like family to me. Having Coach Alfred back with us, that's really just, you know, putting that extra piece in the puzzle. We're glad to have him back with us. Now we just feel like a complete family again. You know, we use that word family here a lot. And again, I, I, I thought I knew that, and I did, and I believed in my heart that I knew that. But in a time of adversity, in, 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 in a time of need and pain, I really had no idea. I mean, I thought I knew, but I really didn't know. The outpouring and support from my family has been unbelievable. Again, it's good to be back out here, boy. Appreciate you guys. Get a break. I'll get on with you. How do you do? All right. Family on two. Family on two. One, two. Family. Those are the bonds that you build with your players that you can go back to and remind them in tough times. At some time, they're going to be tested to its core. When we go in that stadium, bonds are tested when you put your hand on the ground and you look to the guy to your left, look to the guy to your right, you know they're in it with you because they've been through all the hardships. They went through Shiloh. They went through watching Prince Shumble and encouraging Prince Shumble to take that lead. They watched and pushed Kona Schwenke to the top of that wall. Yeah, Kona! Nice! Camp's hard. They took time out of their day call their coach. So when we go in the stadium, there's not going to be one single guy that walks through that tunnel and they touch that sign. They know we have a bond, we have a togetherness, we have a family here, and we're going to fight for one another. We're going to be there for one another in any time, good and bad. The highs of the highs, the lows of the lows. We, we will stand together as a football team and as a football family.